Hello and thanks for joining us on The Pet Stop. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Voynich from the American Animal Hospital in Randolph. Well, coming up on this show, a discussion on the number one health problem for dogs over the past year. We'll also touch on the topic of puppy mills with the fine folks at St. Hubert's. They recently conducted a rescue mission to save scores of dogs. And as always, we'll have this week's Pet of the Week, as well as a visit from Diane Petrozelli. She's from the Monmouth County SPCA for this week's adoption segment. Well, VPI Veterinary Pet Insurance is out with its list of the top medical conditions of 2009 and at the top of the list for dogs was ear infections. There were 68,000 claims and that's just counting the people who have pet insurance. So here to tell us what you need to know about ear infections in dogs is Dr. Deborah Breitstein, registered veterinarian and co-director of the Animal Health Care of Marlboro. Welcome back, Dr. Dan. Nice to be back. Thanks <laughs> good, for having me. Good to have you. We see a lot of ear infections, don't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. It's practitioners. probably one of the most common presenting complaints that we see on our appointment book is ear problem, check ears, shaking head, pain at the when they're being pet. So it's very common. It is, and, and, and it's very complex in some cases, too. It's not just as simple as throwing them on medications. Uh, we can even have allergies involved. Do you want to discuss that? Well, there are some primary causes, whether they're parasitic ear mites and, sure. and things, foreign objects that get in the ears, food hypersensitivity or other allergies that can in be fact, the... In fact, you a list along. There you okay. go, just as so you were we're saying. Going through. And then there are bacterial infections, yeast infections, mm -hmm. um, unhealthy environments, dogs that swim, dogs that um, have a lot of grooming that are done. Many of these dogs have a lot of hair in their ears mm -hmm. and that can be a problem to predispose them to uh, ear problems. Yeah, especially the poodle type breeds. Poodles and any of the dogs that are highly groomed and need to have their ears plucked and many dogs that's done routinely at the groomer. Mm -hmm. And you know, so, so initially the, the initial examination is so important just to get a good look in there and um, we're fortunate to have one of those screens with the uh, video scope in the exam rooms and you could actually, yesterday, uh, just this past week, have you ever been to the Colorado Cafe? No. You want, oh, you got, you got to go. They have everything from line dancing to a mechanical bowl to rock and roll. I'll you know? remember that. It, it's just great. We'll see anyway, the owner, uh, <laughs> Alan, came by with, and he loves his cat, Obama. So he brought his cat in and uh, he rescued it as an older, older cat and it uh, had some ear issues and I looked in there, you know, I had never examined him before. Sure enough, this older cat had ear mites. So, uh, you know, uh, people have to really have their veterinarian check their, their, their pet's ears really closely because they're so easy to treat these days. They are, and you know, just because it looks a certain way does not mean that's what you've got. You know, we've all looked in the ear and said, oh, that's got to be bacterial. That happened with my nurse yep, today. She said, oh, you. that's got to be bacterial. I said, no, nope, we're going to do the cytology. We're going to look. We're going to do the right thing. And it so actually was a combination. So tell us what cytology is. Cytology means the study of cells. So we're taking a sample from the ears right. uh, uh, with a swab. I don't recommend owners use uh, ear swabs at all at home for Thanks cleaning. For and that. we'll talk that's, about that later, yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. But we, after we've evaluated the ear, looking in the ear to see where the problem seems to be, we'll take a sample yeah. with a swab, make a preparation with a slide, stain that, and in our office we'll look under the microscope and try and get an idea of what the major cause is. So right. we can plan our medication. What kind of bugs? If there's mites, if there's yeast, if there's bacteria, and so Sometimes on. you'll look down and you'll see a foreign object. We yeah. don't see it very much. So they don't have too many dogs that are field trialing or grass lawns like in California. Yeah. But we do occasionally see, uh, my partner actually looked in the ear once and saw something sprouting and it had been bird seed that got in the wow. ear. And in that nice dark, damp environment, it sprouted. You know, I had a client that really impressed the heck out of me a few years back. I, I, I put the scope in his cat's ear. He had just adopted this cat. And he said, wow, that's a nasopharyngeal polyp. I looked at your cat. I said, how did you know that? You know? He said, well, so I looked at your poster up on the wall. That's, that's that picture over there. You have, oh, I said, boy, you're actually, actually right on top I was of so impressed. And he wasn't in the medical field either. That's so. what I was going to guess. So, yeah, 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 you would think. So, uh, so that, that's just one of the many problems that they could have in the ear. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the clinical signs. You brought some uh, a list of clinical signs that people can look for at home. Well, the number yeah. one thing I think is pain. Yeah. You know, you go to pet it your hurts. dog and they shy away from you or they vocalize mm -hmm. or they really don't want you to even look in the ears. Uh, sometimes there'll be head shaking and again you can see that on any dog but right. if they're shaking a lot it's interfering with your quality of life or daily activities of living. Mm -hmm. It's time to look in there. Mm -hmm. uh, scratching at the ears. That's probably not something I see as often as you'd think, unless they're ear mites. But right. mostly it's odor. Yeah. You'll smell a problem before you see it. That's what I usually say. Yeah. Because that yeah. ear canal is L-shaped, and it's dark and damp and deep, and you can't really get a good look unless you have the video otoscope or even just an otoscopic, otoscopic exam in the office. Yeah, it's a dark, warm, and moist environment, so Great it's growing perfect ground. for stuff to grow in there, for sure. Yeah. 
So All right. bacteria, yeast, sometimes a combination. And just because it's the same year or it's the same time of year, it doesn't mean it's the same organism. Right. So it's really important for us to take a, a look get a sample. Sometimes we'll culture the ears. If we see a certain type of bacteria or an ear problem that's not resolving the way we think it should be, many times we'll culture the ear. Or some of these dogs need an ear flushing, an anesthetic sedated event yeah. to actually clean those ears. Yeah. Some of them are so painful, it, it, it takes a day or two for the owners to start treatment. We have to give them anti-inflammatories. Pain medicine pain, is absolutely is, important yeah. because it's sensitive, it hurts, then we're asking our pet parents to go in and clean these ears to one of three endpoints. They should clean the ears till it's clean, they have to stop because it hurts, or if they're seeing blood, we tell them they have to stop yeah, too. Yeah. And you know, again, we have to worry about the eardrum as well. And they should always uh, combine the treatment with a treat, with a really special treat, because uh, if they don't, uh, when they see the bottle of the flushing solution of the medicine, they'll take off you know, under the bed or under the sofa. Or and it's an important point that you make, because many of these dogs are repeat performers. Yeah, they chronic. are not something that's sudden, this is something that we have to manage control sometimes through the life of the dog mm -hmm. and that's what makes it a little frustrating for the pet parent and for the veterinary staff because you, you try and offer the best care you can they're not responding maybe there's a weak link somewhere mm -hmm. but it is usually a chronic smoldering controllable sometimes is what we can look for not, right. not cure right and uh, you, you made the point too before never to use q-tips or swabs at home and that's important cleaning the ears the ear canal is L-shaped, so if you use a uh, Q-tip, you're not going to, you could cause damage, mm -hmm. number one. And number two, if you're going to clean the ear, you should really get the proper cleaning solutions from your veterinarian in case the eardrum is compromised. You then have a direct access to the brain, and the nervous yeah. system becomes involved once you have internal ear or middle ear infections, yeah. another big problem for right. our dogs. And, and a sign, sign of that also, as you've uh, seen, I'm sure, is a head tilt. Head you tilt know. or the uncoordinated walk. Sometimes I've seen some dogs that had extension of infection that actually can cause some um, seizure-like activity because the animals are so painful, they're shaking, they drop yeah. to the floor. It's probably not a seizure, but it does look very scary. Mm. So, so very important to, uh, to keep, uh, well, to get on it early, I guess early, early That's is what I was going to say. Thing. Some of my yeah. puppies that are breed predisposed, like Cocker Spaniels, mm -hmm. first visit, here's your ear cleaner. Let me show you how to do this and coupling it yeah, with a delicious the treat. that you mentioned here. Spaniels, Retrievers, mm -hmm. Terriers, Poodles, and Sharpays. Yeah. They can, I swear, they can close their ear canals down in a second. You can't even look in mm. them. And they have that nice little mucousy kind of skin, and that adds to the environment that's yeah. there. And that can be a difficult patient to deal with. Absolutely. Because it hurts and it's a problem. So, you know, to, to, especially if you have a middle-aged or an older, older aged dog or cat, see your vet twice a year. So, you know, so often, I, I would say more, probably 50% of the times, I'll pick up a serious ear infection and the client never even knew about it. Right. They look at the screen and say, oh my gosh, I can't believe what's in there. You exactly. Know? And twice so a year. Be proactive. Proactive. You can be yeah. proactive or reactive. We'd all much rather be proactive yeah. and prevent the pain, the suffering, the chronicity of these. Some of these mm. ear canals get so narrow there's no hope they need surgery yeah. to actually deal with the problem. Avoid that. Dr. Yeah. Deb, thanks so much. Nice Great to be to here. See Thank you, you very much. Folks, still to come, a visit from the folks at St. Hubert's who recently undertook a rescue mission to save dozens of dogs from a puppy mill. We'll also have our pet of the week, and don't forget to stick around to see how you can adopt this cute little guy later in the show. The Pet Stop will be right back.
Welcome back to The Pet Stuff. I'm Dr. Brian Voynick. You know, just weeks ago, our good friends at the St. Hubert's Animal Welfare Center sent a rescue team to Missouri to save the lives of dozens of puppy mill dogs. Not only does this help to save the animals and find them good homes, but it also puts a spotlight on the overall issue of puppy mills. And here to tell us about that trip and their effort is Jacqueline Fahey. She is St. Hubert's Director of Animal Welfare, and also with us is Dr. Karen Oberhansley, and she's of the White House Veterinary Hospital. She was the attending veterinarian who treated all of the dogs for a range of issues following the rescue. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having what us. What a great Thanks thing. So, so it, it surprises me that, that the puppy mills open their doors and allow you to, to, to take their, their animals. Tell us what's going on over there. Um, Teresa Strader, mm -hmm. who is our original contact, um, has a group called uh, National Mill Dog Rescue in Colorado. Okay. She has um, established relationships with a lot of the mills owners and uh, has expressed to them the availability of her picking up these dogs before they're killed mm. unceremoniously or sold at auction for a penny, a quarter, a dollar. So they call her and she goes and picks them up or arranges for another group to come and pick them up. Wow. First of all, Jacqueline, for those out there that aren't familiar with what puppy mills are, can you give us a little education? Uh, usually very squalid conditions, um, somewhere in back away from society, um, people who have no other means of making a living. Now these are illegal, Dr. Oberhansley, right? You were saying in New Jersey, you can't have a puppy mill in New Jersey, unlike Pennsylvania and Missouri, for example. Correct. New Jersey has very proactive animal welfare laws, and the people of New Jersey really would not put up with these kind of situations. But unfortunately, Missouri and Arkansas are the two offending states. And many people will buy puppies at, puppy, at uh, pet stores and say, oh, well, it came from a breeder in Missouri. I've heard that. Likely to come from a puppy mill. Absolutely. There are over 360 licensed right. puppy mills in Missouri, so you can right. imagine how many unlicensed breeders there are. Yeah, and, and deplorable conditions is, is the word, isn't it? Because some of them are living on chicken wire. They don't have little or no human contact. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's no wonder that you know, they're, they're not socialized, and, and then they also come we're popping up some photographs of that rescue now. And um, they also come with all kinds of medical issues because they don't care if they're breeding in hip dysplasia mm -hmm. or uh, seizuring dogs and uh, epilepsy and, and you know, knee dislocations and mm -hmm. all the <laughs> nightmares that we see on a, on a regular basis with these puppy mills, collie eye anomaly blindness and some dogs that carry certain retinal diseases. Um, it's just a, a really sad situation. So, yes. um, so Dr. Oberhansley, you, you were able to examine every one of these Pups, huh? The dozens of them. I did. There's two I did. fleets so far. <laughs> She's our third. angel. <laughs> I'll say. Good for you. Well, these dogs were very interesting because they knew that they were being helped. They knew wow. that they were going to a better place. Yeah. Some of the, the sad things that we saw uh, there was one dog who had had a broken leg that was untreated for two oh. months, yeah. uh, several dogs with leg deformities that were never addressed properly. And the main medical problem that I saw was dental disease, severe oh, yeah. dental disease, yeah. because these dogs aren't allowed well, to. Well, you've drink. got the model for dental disease in your lap there, Yorkshire <laughs> Terriers. I love the breed, but boy, you have to really be. Be, uh, be good about their teeth from an early age, or if you're lucky if they have half of their teeth at age five, wouldn't you agree? Well, especially these dogs, uh, because yeah. the conditions that they live in, they, they drink through a bottle with a spout, just like a rabbit or uh -huh. a hamster will. So right. these dogs are never able to Flush rinse their out. mouth out sure. in a bowl of water, because that's too much work to have yeah. to right. wash a bowl. So right. probably 90% of the dogs needed dentals. When you say 90%? Oh, yes, mm. at least. Well, that's, that's very sad. Now, Jacqueline, tell us, educate a little bit more about the puppy mill situation. Now, in Missouri, certain states can have a certain number of puppy mills, is that correct? No, I, I think love. I think there licensed are licensed puppy mills. Just more people in Missouri who have no other means of making a living, and this is their way of making a living. So you'll see many times even the breed standard is not adhered to. They'll look for a larger female right. who could produce more puppies. Right. Um, but no, there isn't any um, amount number put on how many mills are allowed per state. It's just a, it seems to be more relevant out there because people have no other means of and making a living. How many are in Missouri? 362, I believe, oh, that are licensed. Unbelievable. And tell us about the one that you visited. Uh, we was had it to easy go. To get to? No, we had to go through a town where everything was boarded up and drove down a really long, probably five-mile road right. through two streams. 
with this giant RV, I was hoping we weren't going to sink. Through the stream. <laughs> Hold up. Um, she had several different um, areas with, up on chicken wire, mm -hmm. uh, up on stilts, and a, a stream running through where all of the feces would just pop oh, down and run away. Uh, wow. And she lived in a little trailer. Wow. What conditions, huh? And came out and wanted to make sure that the dogs were going someplace where they were going to get a good home. So she didn't know about St. Hubert's? <laughs> <laughs> We had just driven like 2,500 miles to get there. Wow. And these two happen to be available. Uh, yes. These two are probably many. Yes. And you've got one more shipment on the way, huh? Yes. Wow. Just amazing work. They're so wonderful little dogs, too. They really appreciate any kind of attention that you they can have pay to, them. Yeah, when you, when you get a sheltered dog, they have like gratitude. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it sounds funny to say, but it really, you know, ask people who have a rescue dog or a cat mm -hmm. from the shelter, and they really do. It's amazing stuff. That's true. Jacqueline, thanks so much. Keep up Thank the great you work. For Dr. Robert Hansley, you did dentistries on every one of those critters, didn't you? We yes. did. <laughs> and, and how many do we have left, the teeth in the, on this baby? Oh, she here? still has eight or ten. Yeah. <laughs> she has enough. Yeah, enough. And they're, they're much more comfortable with healthy gums rather than infected teeth in their, in their mouths. Which That's is right. Painful. She'll be a wonderful pet for Way someone. Way to go. Great going. Folks, now it's time for our pet of the week. And these pictures.